My name is Carmen Cordero. I am a grassroots, trained grassroots community organizer. I got my, I started, I became a grassroots organizer in the 1980, 19, early 80s with an organization called National People's Action. Um, and we started with Vecinos Unidos, of course, and Heart, Heart for Davis Rally together. Um, Vecinos Unidos, we're going to talk about Vecinos, it's a, it's a grassroots community organization funded over 20, 30, 35 years, almost 35 years. Why would say 30, right Lucy? If I've been around for 30, it's about more or less. And it's a poor people's organization. It's been around forever, we've been around forever. By the way, I'm looking to retirement, to retire, and they don't want to let me retire. State capital. They keep building, they, they, the issues keep piling and they piling and you want to say, I don't want to do this no more, I'm tired, I need some rest. And every morning you get up and you say, okay, what's new, what's new, what's new. Um, a little more, more real quick about myself. Um, I'm former director of a grassroots community, also another grassroots community organization called Warriors for Real Welfare Reform. And also I was once with a Connecticut Citizens Action Group and a bunch of other social justice organizations. Um, also, we were in 1995 when, along with Vecinos Unidos, teamed up with the Warriors for Real Welfare Reform, and we decided to start going towards um, welfare reform. As you hear the name, Warriors for Real Welfare Reform, we took the name, we said, okay, we're going to make this as positive. There is welfare, well, real welfare reform is not what the government wants. We're the ones that are looking for welfare reform. I'm, I'm, I'm getting sidetracked. But I want to talk back about what Vecinos Unidos do, do, was doing and is still continuing doing. We have a membership of over 250. We're all low-income low women. The majority of us are low-income women. Um, we have a pretty good, solid base in terms of support, support, support network. Um, That's what happens when you don't write stuff down. Uh, we have a Latina-based run organization. We advocate for issues that are directly affected, that we are directly affected by. In that talk, I was going to wind up walking the walk with my sisters. I'm glad I did that. And right now, as, I, as, as, as the Vecinos Unidos, we're raising a young generation of leaders and warriors for the, for the revolution. Because it's not, it's not about just us. We have tons of kids, thousands of children who have no, who are in the process of graduating high school and are looking at each other and saying, what the hell are we gonna do after this? What happens? What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? Like I said, the social workers are being pinned against the same people that they're supposed to represent, so they're supposed to help. Without us, they don't have a job. But right now, what's going, what's happening? You wanna know how they're saving money? The state is saving money by not answering the phones. Every time you call your worker, you're going to get hit with it. And it's 723-1000. And if you don't believe me, try it. You call that number and they tell you, you can answer the number. Please try again. We are extremely busy. And we, you can go at it for a month and you won't get no one. You can call your worker at that number that she gives you and then she's not going to answer because she's busy taking care of all the people that are coming in new. And there is no one else. So this is how they're saving the money. People are falling through the cracks. Our prisons are getting bigger. The edge of, once your kid gets out of high school, what comes after that? If he have, and I'm, I'm speaking from personal experience. I'm not speaking about, it. I'm speaking because this is something that's happening in our family and in, in every single one of the women that are with me. And we have young children, we have young, young men and women who are trying to make it in through college, who are looking at each other and saying, why should we vote? What the hell has that politician done for me? And I'm talking, and I have trained grassroots young people in my house. They can organize. Believe me, they can organize. And they're looking at each other. And they're saying, what has he done for me? What have they done for me? We have, when we have 14 and 15 year olds getting put in jail because the system right now, the education system has, has no, hasn't figured out a way to deal with them. So like, they, like you said, someone, one of my sisters said earlier, they throw back the responsibility on the parent. But yet, we're still as teachers collecting, as we're collecting a paycheck, everyone. Legal aid is collecting, the lawyers are collecting money to represent us. Can we at least have a cake uh, how do you say it? A bank sale, so we can raise the money to advocate for ourselves. Because obviously, no one else is doing it. And unless, I love what you said earlier about the undoing racism. In 1995, 
Um, I took a training with, with a non doing racism training, and I am so glad that I, I came out of that, bit, that, that, that training. I thought I was hit by a truck because there we learned for the first time as, 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 as director of the Warriors for Real Welfare and a very low income woman, as someone who does not have that education, the PhDs and all that, to be able to hold that job. This was on the job training. And the same with Vecinos Unidos, when I sat down at a, at a, at a, at a, at a meeting with, with Hart and then all the other people were of all this, they, they had all these name, letters after them and I was the only one who came from Vecinos Unidos, didn't have a clue what was going on. And everybody was talking over me intentionally. After, it took me about five or six years to figure out what was going on. After that, then we turned around and we went into the undoing racism. And when I took that undoing racism training with People's Institute for Survival and Beyond, I'm off from uh, New Orleans, okay? They're cool, they're the bomb, they're the best. I thank God, I, I really do. When I took that undoing racism training, I realized, I said, what the heck is going on? Then I asked them, is it possible to get this training in my own language, in rice and beans? Because how the hell am I going to talk to sit at a table when I have an organization that is multicultural, multicultural organization, black, Latinos, you name it, we have it. We had a, a mailing list of over 500. This is 95, and this is, I'm trying to retire. Okay, when we, when we cannot even talk about racism amongst our own, when we sit down as an organization and kill each other, to, but we, together we can move mountains. But when it comes to cleaning out that kitchen, we're fighting each other because, oh, she did it today, why can't she do it like that? If I, if I did it like that, why isn't she talking about, why are you looking at me like that? Why is she looking at me like that? And, this is, and these are the isms that keep us apart. What you said what, what, with the, about the, also about the reproductive, about uh, the abortion. The, the, the issues about being in a poor person's organization and having the church saying that abortion is bad, but these are really poor women who can't even afford to pay the rent, put clothes. We can't do that. But at the same time, the church is feeding us that abortion is bad. Hello. Come on, sis. You know, what, what, are, we, what are we supposed to do? Well, we have to go to the white Catholic, and I hate to say this, to, to the, 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 what did we say, right wing. Right wing, right wing work, uh, in churches so that they can help support us. Is that what we're supposed to do? Is that what they're expecting us to do? Again, we go back to the undoing racism stuff.